seriously? Hey, hey guys, and welcome to this showcase video with myself, Six Plus Stevo. In this one, I'm going to be showcasing to you these fellas, the Squig Hog Boys. It's been a little while since I've done one of these showcase videos. I think the last one I did was for the Smasher Squig. Um, I will pop a link up in the corner if you want to check that one out. Um, these guys were done in very much the same method, um, but they God, they took me a long time. I'm not going to lie to you. These guys have been the bane of my existence for a while, and I'm so relieved to finally, finally have them done. It's funny, I just got sort of got um, a hobby burnout, I guess, or painting burnout, although I was still hobbying to a degree. I was still building things, converting things, and I'd started actually painting up other things. I cracked on with these guys, I got the base coats done, I got the wash done, I, I was really making good progress, and then for some reason, I, I don't know what it was, I just kind of stopped. And uh, it's weird, you get these sort of mental blocks sometimes, and... Uh, yeah, I don't know what it was, but I just I just kept putting them off, and they were so close to being finished, and I was like, oh, I, I don't know, I just, I ended up doing something else, I started painting, you know, another miniature entirely, or started building something entirely, and they just sort of got left to the side, and, you know, in, in the early days of doing the army, I was very much um, kind of focused on doing, like, one unit at a time, I'd paint something, I'd build something, paint it from start to finish, and then get on to the next one. I was very ordered and structured like that, and I kind of forced myself to do that, and it, it meant that I got things done. I, I made progress, um, but uh, I think since I've got a bit of the army done, and I'm sort of built it up to a playable level, and I've started doing battle reports and whatnot, it kind of took the pressure off a bit, which was nice in one way, um, it meant I could sort of do what I want and just kind of play around, which was nice for a while, but what that does mean is I end up with lots of half-finished projects. And actually a half-finished project to me is far worse than a project I haven't started yet. Because <laughs> they're just kind of there taunting you and just, yeah, it's uh, it's not good. But anyway, the video is not about um, hobby burnout or painting blocks or anything like that. The video is showcasing these guys that I have at last done. So I have um, I've stuck with basically the same scheme that I do for all my bad moons, the black and yellow and stuff. But with these beast snagger units, it's really given me an opportunity to try out some different things. Uh, I'll, I'll get round to that in a minute and show you some of the bits. But things like the furs and the skins these guys have them, um, and the more feral aspect, and the fact that they're riding big giant fuck off squigs. <laughs> Gives me an opportunity to try out some different paints and different colours and throw in some different things into the mix. To go, sort of throw that in the mix with my usual painting style and, and schemes and stuff. And I, I think it's worked very well actually. I'm overall very pleased with how these guys have come out. Um, now they're not like, this isn't Masterclass, this isn't like, you know, Golden Demon or anything like that. And far, far from it. But uh Overall, I'm very pleased. Um, as far as my painting talents go, I'm very pleased with how these guys have come out. I think they look very serviceable. I think they look, in my opinion, above tabletop standard, um, or at least to a tabletop standard that I'm very happy with. I'm proud to display these and show these off. Um, but yeah, let's talk you through them. So, uh, as I said, the color scheme is the same as always. I use the uh, black and yellow on the armor and things. Uh, the skin recipe for the orcs is the same. Um, so I've, I've stuck to those same sort of uh, limited palette that I always use. Uh, but with the squigs themselves, um, now I really like these pink squigs. I love it. They're, sort of, well, they're kind of like a, a, a pinky purple. Uh, they're kind of like a, a purple base coat with a sort of a, a very light, almost pink highlight, which gives them this really nice sort of pink appearance. And I, I just think it looks great. And I think it contrasts really nicely with the Bad Moon colour scheme. Um, I think it, you know, it just, it, they pop and they're quite vibrant and it adds a nice flash of colour, a different colour within the army. And I think they really sort of stand out from the rest of the army. Um, but we'll uh, we'll take a little look round to them. I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll remove them and then we'll sort of take them in one at a time and have a look at each one. And we'll start off with probably what most people would say is the main event, the little bomb squig himself. Let's move him there and see if we, there we go, get him into focus. Um, but yeah. Um, so he's this one very much follows the same scheme as the rest of my bomb squigs that I've already done. 
Um, and uh, yeah, he, he was a pleasure to paint and I love the little snotling with the nail on the back. But yeah, not too much to speak about really. I've just done everything like normal, red rockets, um, some red sticks of dynamite, a um, little yellow stick bomb there. But yeah, very much a, a fairly simple um, paint job on him. Then we'll come on to this guy. So this guy, um, you'll notice with the mouth, it's got this nice wet look to it. I achieved that by doing, um, I paint it up as normal and everything. The whole, all my miniatures, once they're finished, they get a matte varnish. Then after the matte varnish, I go in with some paint on gloss varnish. And I always do this on um, eyeballs. So even the orcs and the grots eyes have a little dot of gloss varnish on them. Uh, mouths, tongues, slobber, anything like that, I give it a nice gloss varnish. I also do it on like lenses and stuff and scopes. It gives a real nice kind of like glossy look to it. And I really like how the tongues and the gums and everything on these things have come out. It you know, really gives it like a very living sort of look, a wet slobbery mouth. Um, you can see I've applied a lot of battle damage and things around the... Uh, armors and the jaws and stuff um yeah it's these guys have been great fun actually they've taken a while they've been quite hard work but they have been great fun um i did a little bit of blood splatter on this guy uh like i've done with like my killer cans and my death dreads and that but only on one of the weapons and that is from this saddle git you'll see there got the uh, blood effects splatter on there because i just love the that weapon and the way he's hanging off the side there and i love how it just looks like he's you know don't have a drive-by lopping of someone's head. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I think that may be my favourite squig. I'm not sure. Um, but that's that one. Uh, next up, we've got this fella. I don't know, actually, maybe this is my favourite. Um, you'll see that the heads on the riders are different from standard. The heads came from the Beast Snagger boys. Um, because I got the Beast Snagger box set which came with all this stuff, and you get two sets of identical Beast Snagger boys. So I wanted to mix mix in a little bit of variety and stuff, so I wanted to use the heads from these guys on my boys to add in a bit more variety to those squads. But also, I preferred these heads on these boys than the ones that came in there. Um, so I kind of picked out the ones that are quite scarred up. You can see this guy's lost one eye from there's a scar across his eye and everything. So I've only painted in like one eye and left the other one blank to represent that he's lost an eye along the way. Um, I love this 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 squig mouth on this one. It's, it's great. I love how open and savage it looks. Um, yeah, so I really like the pose of the rider there. Um, swivel it around a little bit more and you've got the uh, saddle gear on the back. The one with all the dynamite, looking like a mean, vicious, cunning little fucker. But yeah, there we go. You can see I've applied little bits of battle damage. Very simple method for the battle damage. I just paint on a little bit of black and then go in with some silver and touch up, leaving just like the recesses of the black. It's a very old school, simple technique, but I think it's effective. I, I really like the way it looks and it just adds that extra layer to it that I really, really like, just to do a bit, little bit of chipping and stuff. Um, these are painted in what would be now kind of recognised as a very old school method. But it's a method that I'm comfortable with and I've stuck with and remained consistent with, just to keep my army consistent. Because I kind of feel like it's great to improve. Of course it is. And I am improving all the time. And I am learning new techniques and things. But also... I, I love having a consistent look across the army. And for me, that's kind of more important than an individual piece looking like really, really good. Um, I like the army to sort of have this consistent look throughout and it looked very unified and like it's, you know, one mob on the table. Um, I'll tell you what I haven't talked about is actually the skins and stuff. But this is this guy's great, the one with the mono wheel, with the kicking up the dirt up the back and everything. I absolutely love that. You can see I've left the jaw plate off this one. I just kind of liked it off. I wanted to see his whole face. Um, and I, I like that. They're kind of optional bits, the armor plates that go on the side. You do get, they're, they're basically mono build and static and go together the way they're supposed to go. For, but you do get a little bit of options with these armor plates that stick on the sides and the jaw plates. So you can opt to leave those off if you like. Um, and that's what I've done with this guy. I left his jaw plate off. Um, 
I love this grot on the back with the, the squig gun as well, firing off the squigs. And I love like his face, the way he's taken out. And they've done a really good job on these. They're fantastic miniatures. Now, I know a lot of people don't like the, the sort of pig faces on these squigs. Me, I'm a lover of it. I really like them. I like the noses. I like the faces. They're not for everyone. Um, and it, it's it's subjective, you know. It's it's down to personal taste, isn't it? Um, but, yeah, I'll show you as well what I've done with the furs. So the furs on these, they've been great fun to do and very easy to get, you know, looking good. I think I painted that with Monster Brown. These are army painted colours, by the way. Monster Brown. Then it had a wash of... Um, soft tone and then just a, a highlight of a skeleton bone on that fur um, same as on this fella he had the same but he's got like a slightly different fur thicker fur so it's got a unique look and then the other one who had this kind of scaly skin on his back and I really like that I thought right I don't want to I want to try something different out that I haven't done before so on that guy that was um, I think what I used was I think it's called Crusted Saw. It's like a really, really dark red. Painted the whole thing that. Um, and then that had a wash of soft tone. And then just highlighted that up with a little bit of blood red, I think, to bring it out. But I'm really pleased with the way those um, scales have come out. And again, it's just nice to add a little bit of red and different colours in there. You can see like some kind of red lizard or squig or beast on some planet that he's killed. Um, so it's going to be great when I get... Um, doing the rest of the beast snagger boys to play around with some you know different colors and things because i think i can put some gray furs some brown furs you know some black furs um the different um like scaled skin that some of them have i can do all kinds of different colors and things so that'll be a really good way um to add a little bit of um variety and uh, a mix of different colours within an army that otherwise, for the most part... Do you know what? I'm going to leave him out because he keeps messing up the focus. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be great fun to just throw in a little bit of different sort of textures and colours and things in an otherwise very restricted um, colour scheme. Um, but yeah, anyway, guys, there you go. Progress is continues to be made on the army. And uh, overall, I'm really, really pleased with how the army's coming along. And uh, I am now just a mere one miniature away from getting 2,000 points fully painted, which is, oh, I never thought that day would come. And I, I'm close now, I'm close, so I'm really going to try and crack on and keep the momentum up and keep it going. Uh, but yes, there we go, guys. That's it for now. Please, down in the comments, uh, share what you think. Uh, let me know what you think of these guys. Uh, let me know how you painted your uh, squig hogs. Uh, let me know what colour schemes and things you came up with and what clan you went with and everything else. I'd love to hear about it. And if you want to share your squig hogs and show them off, uh, then check out the link below for the 40k Orc community. An awesome, awesome community of gits that would love to see your paint jobs and conversions and building and progress and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's a fantastic place to come and hang out and share and get tips and stuff. But yes, guys, for now, this is 6 plus Stevo. Signing out.